Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry. Uh, as we go to the chitas of the day, we go to the chumash of the day today. Out of Yontif, Thursday, the ninth of of uh, of Elo of Tisha. I'm sorry. Uh, we are holding in the uh, in Azino. Chapter uh, 32, verse number 19. And the Lord and the Abish saw this and he became angry by, because Ban of Nesa provoked by his sons and his daughters. Verse 28, 20. And he said, I'm going to hide my face from them. And I will see what their end will be. Because they're a generation of changes. They are not recognizable as my children whom I have reared. So that's just, I'll see what their end will be. I will see what will be for them in their end. Because they're a generation of changes. They change my goodwill into anger. I do not recognize them. Woman is, is the Rashi says means my rearing them is not recognizable in them. For I taught them good ways, but they diverted from it. And Rashi says the word umen, amun, is an expression related to he reared. And we find this in other places. Another explanation to umen is an expression of amun, of faithfulness. Which is how the Targum renders it. At Sinai, they said, We will do and we will hear. And a short while later, they broke the promise and made a golden calf. So I don't recognize them. On one hand, they say one thing, on the other hand, they did something totally different. And Kununi, Kuni, Kinuni, verse 21, and Kinuni Beloyel. They have provoked me in my jealousy with no, with a non-god. They provoked me with my anger with their vanities. So I'll provoke their jealousy with a non-people. Their anger with a foolish nation. Now she says, They kindled my anger. With something that's not even a god garnish. Vanity. I will I will anger them also with a non-nation, with a nation that has no name. As the scriptures say, the land of the the the, the, the Gazdim is a people, is this people is not a people. And then when it says by Esau, it says they are despised. The Goy Novel Achisim are provoked with an anger with a foolish nation. These are the heretics. <coughs> So the scripture states the word of fool said in his heart. There is no God. Verse 22, with pagans. Verse 22, because a fire blazed in my wrath. And a burn to the lowest depths. And it consumed the land, the Yavula and its produce. But he lied most the autumn and is setting flames the foundation of mountains. It ash says, Kotcha borod, Kotcha blaze is burnt. Tikoid, what means to tikoid within you to the very foundation. But Techel Eretz Yuvula and the consume the land of its produce, your land and its produce. But he lied. 
setting a flame, Yerushalayim HaMoistus Aram, the Jerusalem burnt. That Jerusalem is on a foundation of the mountains. As, as the Torah says, Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains. 23. I will link evil upon them. I will use up my arrows against them. The Rashi says, I will link evil upon them. As far, I will link evil upon evil. This is an expression similar to the verse Safu Shana Shana, a year is added upon a year. So it's a concept of adding. I will use up my arrows on them. I will finish up all my arrows, meaning until I have no arrows left. This curse, according to the usual way of retribution, is expressed, is really an implied blessing. Namely, God says, My arrows will come to an end. But Israel will not come to an end. They will never be annihilated. Even though I'm going to throw arrows at them, but ultimately I'm going to run out of arrows and the Jewish people will survive. Verse 24. They will sprout here from famine. Attacked by demons. Sized by by Mirari. Bishem Behemis Ashalaban, I'll incite the teeth of livestock upon them. Imchama Zaikli offer with the vemen of creatures that slither in the dust. Now she says, I will sprout here from famine. Uncle is rendered this as a swollen from famine. But I have no evidence from scripture for this. In the name of Rabbi Shadashin, however, I've heard that the expression Mizerav. Is, a, is equivalent to Sha'iridov, hairy from famine. For an, an emancipated person grows hair on his skin. Ma'aze, and uh, Ma'aze is here, a medic for here. Belechem Reshef, what does that mean? Demons fought against them, as scripture states, flying creatures fly upwards. These are demons. Vikete Merodi. Ketem Razik is exertion caused by a demon named Mirari. Ketem means exertion similar to I decree the grave upon you. In Hebrew, the word the decree is a gazeta, the root which is geza, to cut. Hence, its primary meaning is to cut. There are many such roots in Hebrew. And as she brings, they all bear the meaning of cutting. And the second meaning of a final permanent decision of ruling. Amongst them follow Psak, Daka, Gezer. Only Rashi can go through the whole Tata and know exactly how to explain a word. Hashem Behemis, I'll send the teeth of Lysat, and indeed it once happened that the sheep were biting people to death. Chama Zechli offer. With the vermin of creatures that slid in the dust, Zaychli offer the vermin of snakes which crawl on their bellies on the dust. They crawl just as the water flows upon the ground. The word Zichile denotes slithering, action of water upon the dust. And similarly, the way that anything that slithers and shuffles across the ground to move along. Verse 25, from outside the sword will, will bereave, will be will be bereave, and the terror from within. Young men and maidens suckle, suckling babies with vulnerable elders. The last is out of the city, the sword of hostile troops will bereave them. When you flee, escaping from the sword, the inner recesses, chadaram of your heart will pound within you out of terror and will gradually die from this. Another expression, within your house, there'll be, there will be terror, of impending fear of the plague. As the scripture states, when death has come up into your windows, 
Uncle Zender this in the, in the way, another explanation, outside the sword will bereave, they will be killed by the sword on account of what they did in the streets. As scripture states, corresponding to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, you set up altars of shameful things. And along the same line, Machadarim Ema means on account of which they did in the innermost chambers of their house. Have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness? Each one in its paved chambers. Verse 26. I said that I will make them and enter them, eradicate the remembrance from mankind. So Rashi, I said in my heart, I will make an end of them. One may also explain afayim to mean I would make them as paya, the corners of the field, which are left as ownerless for the poor to collect. I will cast them away as ownerless. Find a similar expression in Ezra. He gave them kingdoms of people. He separated from them as ownerless things. Menachem Mesorok says, also classifies in this way. Others have explained the expression according to the tradition of the Tigum. My wrath will fall upon them, thereby assuming the, that the, the word afafeim stems from the word af, anger. Rashi says this is, but this is incorrect. Whereas we're so, our verse should have been written afafeim with two alephs. One owl to serve as, as a prominent prefix, I will. Another aleph as a root letter, like I will strengthen it. And I would encourage you with your mouth. Moreover, the aleph, this is grammar. So, thus we can see that Unculus is rendering this trigram here, could have meant that the word is simply the form of af. af. So, how does he justify that such things? So Rashi disagrees with Unkos. Verse number 27. Luli Word not for the enemy's wrath was heaped up, lest their adversaries just dist or torrent, lest them claim. Our hand was trumpeted. The Lord did none of this. Rashi says, were it not for the enemy's wrath, was heaped upon against them to destroy them. And if the enemy would succeed in overtaking them and destroying them, he would attribute the greatness to himself and his deity, but he would not attribute the greatness to me, to God. So if not for the enemy themselves that are idol worshippers, so the problem is that this is the meaning, least their adversaries distorted. At least they misconstrued the, the matter by attributing their might to alien to whom greatness does not belong. At least they claim our hand it was trumpeted, but that nation is one devoid of counsel. <speaking in Hebrew> For they are a nation devoid of counsel. They aim and tabuna and they have no understanding. For if they were wise people, they would understand this, namely, how can one person pursue a thousand? What a powerful, powerful. What a powerful. We'll now go to the time of the day. Now, the Rebbe continues 20th letter in the Geras HaKodesh. And it continues in the Kabbalistic. And we're going to continue the concept. We'll understand, we'll now understand in the term of Svirot and the corresponding letters of the divine name why the mitzvahs are in Malchus. The latter, hey, are the four letters of God's name. Hey, Yud K, Vav K. So that's the, the last hey in Kabbalah. It says the last day of the of God's name is 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 the concept of mitzvah, which is also the hey is the last day is the sfiras of Malchus, the last day. But Teira, but the Teira, he zayid ampin. The Teira is in zayid ampin vav shoshem avai, which is the letter vav, 
of the name of God. Hagam shalamay lebara chamit. Hamit is him begil galta belavnis, though on a higher plane, as mitzvahs the Torah found in the level of keser and arachapim, the mitzvah in the galgula, the skull that encompasses the meichin, the intellect. And more specifically, in the whiteness and the level of chesed of the Golgotha of the skull, or chesed of Arachapin, here Urcha the Palga the Sharid, in the path that is the parting of the Seiros, literally the hairs, in which divide the which which divide into 613 path infusions of the Torah as it's in Zerampin. This is Kabbalah. Thus, the mitzvahs are encompassing level Galgulto. They come from the skull that transcends the level of Meich, and they come seemingly from Keser. But the Torah comes from the supernal wisdom. So it's seemingly the Torah is lower than mitzvahs. Though it's ultimately derived from the root, which is loftier than the supernal Chachma, it is in the concealed meichen of Arach Ampi, which is the wisdom underlying the reasons for the commandments. So the concealed meichen <coughs> and Arach Ampi that only transcends comprehension contains the wisdom underlying the reason of commandments. These reasons will first be revealed when the revelation of the concealed meichen when Mashiach comes. That's why we're really going to find out whatever we understand today in the understanding of Torah Mitzvah is not really the hidden aspects, the way they are understood in Chachm in the in the Chachm, what's called Chachm in the hidden wisdom. And so far as Torah Mitzvahs are rooted in Keser, that's all in Keter, the Mitzvahs are higher plane than Torah. Torah is rooted <clears throat> in the hidden level of Chachma, level of Meichel of Keser. While the mitzvahs are rooted in the Galgalta, in the skull of Keser, the encompassing level of Keser that transcends Meichel wisdom. Why is it then that they're standing within the spirits, within the corresponding letters of the four names of God, the four letters of God, the He, which is lower than the Vav? Tayyid is lofty in the mitzvahs. For mitzvahs are situated in Malchus and in the corresponding final letter, hey, a divine name. While Torah is in Zayin Ampin in the corresponding letter, hey, a divine name. So why ultimately when it comes down to the world, is Torah higher than a mitzvah? This is the question which the Altar Rebbe now answers. However, this is likened to an inverted seal. The stamp of an engraved seal leaves an impression which is the exact opposite of itself. Right becomes left and left becomes right. Whatever protrudes becomes indented and whatever is indented protrudes. So too the protruding of the superior level of mitzvahs and keser descends by the means of a shalsa within the sephiris in an indented or a lower manner while the indented or the lower level of Torah descends within the spheres in a protruding or loftier manner. And that's the concept of the beginning is wedged in the end. So mitzvahs, the way it comes down into the world, is lower than Torah because it actually comes from a higher place. Everything is opposite the way it's above. So the beginning of the superior level of Keser, in which the mitzvahs are rooted, descends, and then wedged at the culminating in the lower level of the spheres, the spheres of Mahas. That's the power of the infinite power of God, which has the capability to ultimately come in to a yesh, to something that is, that is, that is, that is something from nothing, as we explained before. By the ilu'al, not through a concept of cause and effect, Shaya Allah Mukumi lost the bottom is good, then it'll be then it'll be nullified. Then the, 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 the effect will be nullified to the cause. But over here, the Abish through Malchus, he creates a whole different identity 
it creates a whole different level that that level has its own identity. And only Malchus can do that because only in Malchus is revealed something that has that has an infinite concept to it. <laughs> so in a way, the yesh should be a self-perception, an entity distinct from the source of divinity. So that the blessed, so now you'll have a melech. That's the way the Abishti becomes a melech. The Abishti God only becomes a melech when he has an am, when he has a king over his self size separate thing. <coughs> God is not a king over, over his kids, God is a king over humans. And they have a separate identity. And that's why ultimately your children also have their own identity, even though they come from us. Through the fulfillment, the commandments that he commanded upon them. So it's only thereby that God desired to reign over created beings is fulfilled. For I explained above, his sovereignty cannot, can find expression only over create creatures who consider themselves to be separate entities from him, but who nevertheless nullify their will to his through the actual performance of mitzvahs. Moreover, the final act, those mitzvahs that are performed with the physical object was present in the beginning of thought. The level of thought that trends even the, the first divine thought goes higher than even the wisdom, the highest level of wisdom above. Within the sublime level, a divine intent desire the fulfillment of those mitzvahs from the vowel physical, that's why the power, the ultimate aspect is the physical mitzvah. It's not the chachma. The ultimate aspect is the physical mitzvah. This why the sages in Jerusalem and Talmud said is, was, it was, it is that I'm shimmer not of the opinion that one interrupts Torah study in order to fill the commandments of Lulu. Meaning, even Torah study the first to a mitzvah, a time of who performance has arrived. That he would that he would stop, even though was a was Tarasim Nasib, when it came to do a mitzvah, he stopped everything. And he waited, he went and he went to, went and did the mitzvah. Because ultimately that's where you're gonna find Odin said, that's where you find the infinite power, that's where you find the whole purpose. Moreover, Jerusalem Talmud says, whoever learns with the intention not to practice, it was better for him that his afterbirth turn over. What does that mean? That he would not be born, God forbid. So the whole purpose is to learn, is to do. And if you don't learn to do, then the learning is worthless. For the afterbirth was formed first by the seminal drop. And it was and, and, and until the 40th day, when the embryo begins to take on form, it alone was the essential substance of the embryo. The afterbirth, even though the afterbirth is nothing, goes to throw it away. But the afterbirth is what created you. What gave you your sustenance? Therefore, in the, in the same manner, the commandments are the essence of the root of the Torah. Even though the commandment is physical, and the Torah is wisdom. So in the upper world, wisdom is higher than the physical. But ultimately, the whole purpose of the spiritual is for the physical. So therefore, ultimately, everything is in the physical. Except this loftier standard of mitzvahs is on an external market, while the other attitude exists on an internal level, and thus infuse the mitzvah vitality so to the common, as we'll explain below. Thus, should a person study Torah not intend to inform mitzvahs, he's lacking the very root and the very foundation of the Torah, and thus is better that his afterbirth was turned over. That completes the Titania of the day. It's a busy day today, my friends, Edivim Kipper. Today is the ninth day of the month. And uh, the Tillam of the month is 49, 50, 51, 
52, 53, and 54. And the three chapters of the day is 112, 113, and 114. I want to invite everybody to, uh, to, uh, to, to, first of all, we're having, those that can't come to show, we're having a Kol Nidre on Zoom at 6.30, and the Kol Nidre in the synagogue will be at 7.15. Tomorrow is Yom Kippur, it's a fast day. I wish everybody a Gemach, Sima Tova, a Shona Tova, Masuka. Shall we be blessed with a happy and healthy and beautiful year. God bless you all. We'll meet you, see you all together on uh, Friday morning at 8 o'clock. And I uh, wish you all, if I don't see you over Yantiv, that we should only be blessed with a happy and healthy year. And if I see you over Yantiv, I'll meet you, I'll greet you in show over here on Yantiv. Yeah. A good year, everybody. Um, yeah.